Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's lecture, where we talk about what is ethnic studies. The readings for today were uh, the article by Evelyn Hudehart and the first chapter from the textbook, A Different Mirror. So the article gives us a little bit of background history on the field of ethnic studies uh, and where it came from, how it was started, um, and so on. So the birth of ethnic studies begins with the civil rights movements and being inspired by those movements at that time. They started in universities in California and spread throughout the country and came from a student protest and student demands where they were asking for access to higher education, changes in curriculum, recruitment of faculty of color, and the creation of the ethnic studies field. Some of the aspects or components of uh, ethnic studies are also discussed in the reading and give you a sense of how the field is different from some of the other academic fields that exist. So for example, ethnic studies challenges power structures within higher education. It challenges Western imperialism and Eurocentrism. It recognizes the important of different perspectives and uses a comparative approach to studying different racial ethnic groups. It's an interdisciplinary field, meaning that it pulls from some of the other disciplines like English, anthropology, sociology, history, political science, and so on. And it addresses questions of power through the lens of race, class, gender, sexuality, and so on. In other words, it looks at how race, for example, is uh, mitigated by gender differences, sexuality differences, differences in terms of religion, and so on. The reading also talks about some of the ongoing challenges, and we want to um, consider here that the article was written in 1993, and so she was really focusing on what the challenges were in the 1990s, but we can see some of these challenges still existing today. So these uh, challenges included being perceived as lacking rigor and legitimacy as an academic field, um, not taken as seriously as some of the other academic fields, targeted for budgetary cuts. So whenever um, throughout the history of ethnic studies existence in many institutions when there have been um, economic challenges for those institutions where they have had to make decisions about making budget cuts, often they look at ethnic studies as one of the places to start cutting. Another challenge is competition with other departments for scarce resources. Again, if the field isn't considered um, serious enough um, or it's not respected enough within higher education, then when it comes time to um, decide which departments are gonna get resources, it's difficult sometimes for ethnic studies to get those resources. The reading also talked about the difference between being a department versus a program. And it talks about how when you are a department, like say in the English department or the political science department, um, you have more um, legitimacy within the institution, you have access to resources, um, you also have some independence in terms of um, and autonomy in terms of creating your own curriculum, um, hiring your own uh, faculty and so on. Whereas programs are often um, only provided a director or chair of a program and are often made up of uh, components or courses from other existing departments. Now, fortunately here at CU Denver, we don't have that problem. Although the program in ethnic studies is considered a program, we do have a chair, we do have our own faculty lines, we do have, create our own curriculum and courses and so on. So there are some differences institution to institution in terms of how ethnic studies um, appears and is organized at different institutions. One of the other challenges uh, discussed is integrating into higher education while maintaining ties to community activism and public policy. And this was one of the concerns that was definitely part of the conversation in the 90s where there was a lot of discussion and debate as we saw in the reading about 
what it meant for ethnic studies to become more institutionalized and more accepted as an academic field within higher education. And if that meant um, that we would lose our ties to our community activism and public policy that the field was originally intended to also be a part of. Now taking this to the uh, first chapter in Ron Takaki's book, we get a sense of what are some of the questions that the field of ethnic studies intends to answer. And we see this in that uh, anecdote he begins the chapter with of his experience with the taxi driver, where he's asked questions like, how long have you been in this country? Other similar questions to this one are, um, have you ever been asked the question, what are you or where are you from? Um, and a lot of the insinuation that comes with these questions is really um, raising the question of what is an American? And here in this um, image um, is a photograph of Ron Takaki who um, passed away a few years ago. But here you can see, get a sense of who was it that this taxi driver was looking at and what assumptions was he making based on what uh, Dr. Takaki looked like um, and how that those assumptions led to the kinds of questions he was um, asking. So as he states um, of his taxi driver, quote, to him, I did not look like an American. In the chapter, he also talks about the master narrative that exists of, Ameri of American history and how the role of multicultural history or the fields of ethnic studies is to pose some challenges to this master narrative. So some of the aspects of this master narrative include the idea that the US was settled by European immigrants and that all Americans are white as we see in his interaction. Not to be white means being other, different, inferior, or unassimilable. The master narrative, however, has been challenged by the ongoing changing demographics that we see him talk about, right? The more diverse um, the country becomes, um, the more this master narrative gets questioned. So the role of ethnic studies is to challenge this narrative and write one that is more inclusive, and that is his attempt in writing this book. So the multicultural approach to US history aims to recover missing history in mainstream history courses, exposes students to histories of peoples they will probably encounter in the future if they haven't already, uh, he discusses the intellectual purpose of multicultural history as uh, being a more inclusive curriculum is also a more accurate one. And the comparative approach looks at various racial ethnic groups sim simultaneously, finding both the differences among these groups' histories and experiences, but also some other commonalities, right? How some of these um, groups and their experiences are actually connected to each other. And also looking at the moments in history when these different groups have been able to work together in solidarity. He also talks about the historical contradictions that exist and that is one of the um, key issues that ethnic studies um, takes on. So on the one hand, you have these idealist visions, um, such as Thomas Jefferson's vision of an America covered with, quote, a people speaking the same language, governed in similar forms and by similar laws, as well as the ideals of freedom and equality that exist throughout our uh, foundational uh, documents, like the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution and so on and so forth. So there's that vision versus the real economic needs that started arising very quickly from the inception of the country, um, which meant needing an army of workers, which resulted in slavery and importing labor from different parts of the world, right? Um, and so you have these contradictions between this idealist vision of a very homogenous uh, country and population and culture versus the economic needs that resulted in bringing people to this country 
that were very different from that ideal. And now those populations have been here for generations um, and others continue to come because we still need those um, army of workers. Um, and now finding ourselves or consistently finding ourselves throughout history with this contradiction of how do we include these workers that we need um, while still trying to uphold this idealist vision um, that was there from the beginning. He also talks about you know, what happens then for those populations that don't fit into that uh, white American uh, cultural uh, vision and image. Um, what happens to those other populations when they're um, learning history, in, for instance, in mainstream um, educational institutions, right? And he uses this, uh, draws from um, this quote from Adrian Rich, he states, what happens, to borrow the words of Adrian Rich, when someone with the authority of a teacher describes our society and you are not in it? Such an experience can be disorienting, a moment of psychic disequilibrium, as if you looked into a mirror and saw nothing. And so you really need to sort of sit and think about, right, what does it mean when you don't see yourself reflecting, don't see your own uh, stories reflected in the history that is told about this country, and what does that mean, and does that matter? So one of the key um, goals of the fields of ethnic studies is to create those mirrors, right, to create those mirrors in which everyone can see themselves, can see their own stories, can see their perspectives, however contradictory, however um, problematic, however uh, different they might be from each other. Um, that is one of the simplest ways that we can think about what is it that ethnic studies does, right? Um, now, to bring the uh, Hugh DeHart's article um, forward a bit from the 1990s, I just listed here a, a few of the contemporary challenges to the fields of ethnic studies and how widely different that looks depending on where you are in the United States. So for instance, on the one hand, you have the banning of ethnic studies in the state of Arizona, um, yet in places like Los Angeles in the last couple of years, laws have been passed to include ethnic studies as part of the public school curriculum. One of the other challenges that you may have heard about is this idea of critical race theory. Right, and that being um, that struggle being experienced state to state. So you have quite a number of states that have passed a state level legislation that states that critical race theory should not be taught in the public school system, in the K through 12 system, in public universities and colleges, and so on. And so here, these two links, which I will also include in the video section of the module for this week. One gives you a history timeline of ethnic studies history, which begins with those movements from the 1960s and includes information and video clips about these um, more contemporary challenges to ethnic studies. And also a clip of, that actually explains what is critical race theory um, and, and why uh, that is being um, challenged at this point in time um, and how those challenges are appearing and where they're appearing throughout the country. So this brings our uh, lecture for this week to an end. I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Take care.